we're going to go through a few things today uh, quickly for you, uh, dealing with uh, package theft and fake arrest warrant scams. So two completely different uh, subjects. So we'll switch gears uh, in the middle uh, from package theft to warrant scams. We'll start out with package theft and, and just a few facts about package theft. And I'm going to give you a lot of statistics here at the beginning. Um, and you can look at the screen. 43% of Americans uh, say they've been a victim of package theft. Uh, here in the Christmas season, I've seen it uh, said that uh, packages being delivered to homes go up uh, about 81% during this time of the year. So uh, of those 43% of Americans, a lot of that's going to happen around the Christmas season because we're getting more and more things shipped to our home. 61% uh, say they know someone who's had a package taken. 43% uh, say they know they've had a neighbor who's been victimized. Average cost of stolen packages is $136, uh, which doesn't seem like a lot, but I have some statistics of um, online shopping growth and things being shipped to homes. Uh, in 2014, our online shopping uh, was 1.3 trillion worldwide. Uh, by 2018, that had grown to 2.8 trillion. Uh, in 2020, 4.1 trillion. And in 2021, it grew to 4.9 trillion worldwide. So almost $5 trillion worldwide are online purchases, a lot of those being sent to homes. Uh, grocery deliveries, just grocery deliveries, which also get stolen. When I was researching, you know, you really don't think of your groceries if you get them delivered to your home or your food being delivered to your home being stolen. Uh, but uh, grocery deliveries grew about $6 billion uh, and they make up a, a percentage of actual stolen products. So, uh, package deliveries, people that say they get a package delivery, 50% of the people surveyed say they get a package at their home once a month. 38% uh, say they get a package once a week. Uh, so it is a growing um, industry to have things shipped to homes. Of course, a lot of online retailers offer free shipping. Uh, so a lot of times it's more convenient just to purchase it online, have it shipped right to your home. You don't have to go somewhere, get out, figure out how you're going to haul something home, especially if it's a larger object, uh, getting it shipped to, to your home or to somebody else in, at Christmas time, especially if they live across the country. Uh, you may ship things to family members. They may ship things to you uh, and have them delivered uh, just because it's it's easier and it's a necessity around Christmas time. Uh, I know I just sent some uh, stuff to my parents uh, up in Illinois. And of course, uh, we're going to talk about where to deliver things. Um, I always have them sent to a business because I know if they get sent to the home, they're in danger of somebody taking them while, while my parents are out and about. So, um, one term that we'll talk about here early that you may hear, uh, people who steal uh, packages off your off your porch, which is where we get the name porch pirates. So if you hear anybody talking about porch pirates, uh, that's just another name for uh, individuals who are stealing packages off of out of businesses or off of uh, porches or homes or that sort of thing. So uh, it is a non-discriminating uh, field, apparently, for porch pirates. Uh, uh, let us let me tell you, 49% are men and 51% are women. Uh, so it's, it's, you know, it, it, it's an equal opportunity a crime. Uh, and if you think, well, I don't live in an area where this might be a problem, uh, it's pretty even. 34% of these incidents happen in cities. 20% uh, in suburban areas and 13% in rural areas. And if you break down population, uh, that's pretty consistent uh, across the board. So no matter where you live, there is that potential that if you have a package sitting outside your home, uh, you know, somebody may drive by and take a look and, uh, and try to take that package. So 
uh, just something to kind of look out for. 52% of Americans are worried or were worried that a package would get stolen during the holiday season. So it's something we think about. It's something that we uh, plan for. Uh, statistics say that we are willing to wait 40 minutes uh, pretty much as a maximum. Uh, when we know we're having a package delivered, we'll adjust our schedules. And a lot of people do adjust their schedules. Uh, so they will be home when a package is delivered uh, just to keep that package from sitting outside. Uh, and we'll talk about not to get ahead of myself, but let me get to the next slide so I can tell you some of the things that you can do to avoid package theft, uh, because that's truly, I can't give you all the statistics of what's going on without giving you uh, some of the things that you can do. Of course, you should always track your deliveries, uh, no matter who you're sending it through, uh, all you, uh, UPS, your postal service, uh, FedEx, any other uh, large uh, shipping organization, DHL, uh, anything like that, is going to have a tracking number. Uh, and you can track those uh, online or by phone call usually. Uh, so there are several different methods that you can track. They have mobile apps if you use your phone a lot. Uh, so you can always punch in that tracking number and find out where your delivery is at any given time. Uh, and most of the time, it'll say, if it's in your area, it'll say out for delivery. So you know it's on a truck somewhere, probably in your town. Uh, it will be coming to you at some point. Uh, and of course, out for delivery could mean, you know, they left at 7 a.m. that morning in the truck and you get it at 8 p.m. that night, unfortunately. Uh, but if you're tracking your deliveries, at least you'll know what day to expect that delivery. And if it doesn't show up on the day that it says, or if it says package delivered and you don't have that package, it's not sitting on your porch when you get home. If you happen to not be home, uh, then you certainly can start contacting the uh, shipping company and letting them know that you did not receive that package uh, that says it was delivered. So always 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 track your deliveries uh, keep up with what's going on with them where they're at uh, so you'll know when they're supposed to be at your at your home or business or wherever you're sending them to uh, you can always select a signature required option uh, when you purchase an item and that just simply means that the the shipping company will not leave it unattended at your door they're going to require somebody to sign it a lot of times we don't choose that option for fear that we might not be there uh, and we don't want to go try to track down our, our package later on uh, wherever it might end up at the post office or the shipping company. Uh, so a lot of times we'll skip that step because we think it's easier for us uh, in case we happen to not be home when the, when the package is delivered. But it is a safeguard. It safeguards your package so that it doesn't just get left uh, sitting outside your house on your porch uh, or outside of a business if that business isn't open at the time when it's delivered uh, so that anybody can drive by and take a look at it and see if they particularly want to pick it up. Uh, you can always pick up packages at a secure location. Uh, you can either have it shipped to a, a business or work location or if you have a, a post a box situation where you where you rent a post box or um, or the shipping location itself, uh, you can always use a secure location to pick up your packages. One thing that's relatively new in the industry are lockable delivery boxes. Um, and if you search online, um, lockable delivery boxes, you're going to see several pop up. Uh, and it's something relatively new with the uh, with the amount of items that are being shipped uh, to homes and the amount of, of shopping that we're doing online. Uh, there is a whole industry now of boxes that you can mount at your business or on your you know on your home uh, that are secure. They can't be taken off. They can't be pulled away, uh, but they lock. Your package can be put in there. It'll be locked, and then you have the ability to unlock it and get your packages out after they've been delivered. So 
Uh, it's something if you if you do a lot of shopping and you're expecting packages on a regular basis that you may or you have expensive things being shipped to your home, it's something you may want to look into. Um, security and doorbell cameras. Uh, doorbell cameras especially have taken off uh, since since their inception uh, on Shark Tank, and not to not to give any uh, advertisement to the show, but uh, one of the original doorbell cameras was on Shark Tank, and, and it wasn't well received. Uh, it went on the show, but it has become a huge industry, and they are very popular. And security and doorbell cameras tend to catch video. They don't stop somebody from taking your package, uh, but they certainly catch a lot of video of people coming up to porches, grabbing packages. It makes it much easier for law enforcement to identify people who are in an area taking packages. So again, a doorbell camera or security camera is not going to stop somebody from taking your package, but it may be able to identify somebody and you may be able to recover that package uh, later on. Uh, one great thing to do if you live in a neighborhood and you have neighbors uh, who are home most of the time, uh, have a neighbor get your packages. If you know you're gonna have something delivered, uh, work with your neighbors and let them know, hey, I've got something coming today. I'm expecting a delivery. If you see the truck pull up outside, can you make sure you grab that and just hold it for me till I get home? Uh, it's a great way. It's very popular and very, very, very effective uh, to work with your neighbors uh, and, and have them secure packages being delivered for you, especially if you have neighbors who are home a lot. Uh, during the day when you may be off out at work or off at a different location. And of course, shipping packages to work or business locations is always a good way to uh, make sure they're secure. Most business uh, deliveries happen during the day when the business is open. Uh, that's the they'll and they get priority to make sure that they're delivered. While the business is open, somebody takes them inside and hands them to somebody at the physical business. So uh, it's a good way to make sure your packages are actually getting delivered to somebody and not left in a location um, because especially smaller businesses are always going to get their packages while they are open. So uh, that's just a few things to think about uh, as, as we're talking about package theft. Uh, again, package theft is up during the holidays as much as 81% uh, because we're expecting more and more and more packages to be delivered for online shopping, uh, especially since COVID, through COVID, since COVID, uh, we kind of went from a brick and mortar system uh, to a lot of online shopping uh, during our COVID days. So uh, that has carried over into, into post COVID, as we like to say now. So we are expecting a lot of packages to be delivered to homes during the holiday season, and we certainly want your packages to be secure. So those are just a few tips. There's hundreds of tips online. If you uh, search how to avoid package theft, you'll hear even more, um, but the ones that I'm giving you here are, are the most popular of all those ideas and kind of encompass most of those uh, ideas for package theft. Uh, let me see if there's anything else that we needed to talk about. 57% of Americans say they will stay home if they know they have a package coming. So uh, that's just one of the statistics for, uh, for package theft. And from 2010 to 2017, uh, the package theft increased 600% in the United States. So unfortunately, it's become a very popular crime uh, with people who want to get out and steal something quickly. And hopefully for them with not a lot of uh, interaction with anybody. So uh, just something to keep in mind this holiday season. If you're getting packages or shipping packages, uh, make sure that that you're tracking those packages. Uh, if they're going, if you're the shipper and you're shipping them somewhere and you know that package is being delivered, 
verify that it got delivered, that the person actually got it. Uh, because if they didn't, you want to be getting a hold of that shipping company to make to verify that it was delivered to the correct location, uh, and then you know make whatever claims necessary if for some reason that package has been taken. So, just some tips on package theft. And now we're going to completely shift gears uh, and talk about fake arrest warrant scams. Um, a little bit. This kind of fits a lot with what everybody has been talking about up to this point. It's just another uh, different type of scam, but the the goal of getting money sent to somebody with a with a money wire or a gift card or a prepaid card uh, is the same. Most all of these scams. Uh, be it uh, an arrest warrant scam or a, a grandparent scam or any of the other ones you've heard about today, a utility scam, uh, are all out to get that quick money sent to them. Uh, but an arrest warrant scam, just so you know how they work, a uh, caller usually states they're from an official agency, a sheriff, a police officer, uh, a bounty hunter, possibly a lawyer. Um, most of the time you're going to get a call, they're going to say they're a police officer uh, and they're calling because you have an arrest warrant. Now, I will tell you, I've been in law enforcement for a long time. Uh, if you have an arrest warrant, you probably know what you did to get an arrest warrant. It's not something that usually sneaks up on most people in, in America. So if you haven't done anything that you particularly think you should be arrested for, chances are you don't have an arrest warrant and you can rest pretty, pretty comfortably. But the caller usually states there's a warrant uh, for your arrest. Uh, the more sophisticated scams will actually manipulate the caller ID so it pops up that it's a police department or a sheriff's department. Um, I, I even know of one call here in town uh, that spoofed our, our courthouse and they actually called somebody in the courthouse and the person said, well, I'll just walk across the hall if that's the office you're from. And of course, the person hung up. So uh, just because that caller ID says it's something official, that does not mean that it necessarily is or probably is not uh, if it's a scam. Uh, caller is going to say that you owe some sort of money so that the warrant won't be served on you. If you don't want to go to jail, you need to pay this money. Again, as everybody has said today, you can't pay your fines for court. If you get a traffic ticket, you can't take a prepaid gift card <laughs> to the court and pay your fine. It just doesn't work that way. They're going to tell you to go get some other form of payment for them. So uh, same thing for arrest warrant scams. You can't pay your fine if you happen to have one with a prepaid gift card. It's just not the way things work. But the caller is going to say you have a fine if you go get this money really quick. And again, they're going to try to rush you. Uh, if you go do this really quick, uh, we won't come to your house uh, and get you. Now, I will tell you something that hasn't been mentioned today. With Google Earth, if somebody knows your address and, and addresses are out there online, there's information out there that you can get a hold of. Somebody can simply pull up a Google map and probably tell you what your house looks like. So just because somebody can tell you you know, where the Walmart is in your town or uh, what the, your street looks like does not mean they're even in the United States. Uh, we've had that happen multiple times where we've gotten calls, hey, this person says, you know, they're in my neighborhood and they can describe my house. And the person was calling from at that time was calling from Jamaica. They've never even been to the United States. But because of technology, you know, it's easy to look things up and look addresses up if they happen to get your address. They've got your phone number. They've probably got your name. 
they probably have your address. They just need your social security number or your birth date or something they don't have that's a little more protected before they can start that identity theft or any other thing that they're planning on doing. So uh, again, I reiterate uh, and I say it all the time, do not give personal information over the phone. Do not, do not, do not, do not. If somebody calls you and tells you they're from a company, then you say, wonderful, I will call you back and you go find the published real number for that company. Uh, I've actually had that happen to my to, to me. I got a, a an email that claimed to be my mortgage company and it didn't look right to me. So I went and found the number I had for the mortgage company and contacted them and asked them if it was legitimate. And it turned out it was legitimate and I was able to do business, but I didn't just respond to the call or the email that was given to me. I went and found the actual number that I have for that agency and called them back in an arrest warrant scam. Don't call the number back that's on the, the caller ID. Don't give the information there. If you want to check it out, find that department's published phone number, however you want to do it through, you know, uh, 411 or, or online. Call that department and ask them the question. Uh, this is so-and-so. I got a call from your agency that says I had an arrest warrant. Uh, if you truly want to find out, I am going to guarantee with much, much certainty that they're going to say that was a scam call. We have no arrest warrant for you. Again, if you have an arrest warrant, you probably know you have an arrest warrant. Uh, so do not, do not, do not get brought into these scams. Uh, because because of fear that there might be something out there that you didn't know about. A lot of times they'll use like the IRS because they know everybody's afraid of, of the IRS. So they're probably going to hit you with something like that. Let me jump on to this. Uh, again, some warning signs we were talked about. Uh, as a law enforcement officer, uh, very rarely, if ever, are we going to call you and tell you we have an arrest warrant for you? We truly depend on the element of surprise most of the time to serve arrest warrants. So we are not in the habit of calling people and saying, hey, there's an arrest warrant out for you. How do you want to take care of this? That's not really the way the system works. So again, don't fall for those calls. Hang up on them. If you really want to check them out, find the published number for that agency, call and ask legitimate questions to the actual agency. Um, once an arrest warrant is sworn out, it either has to be served or recalled. Uh, once there's an arrest warrant, you can't go pay a fine to get it taken care of. That's, that's not the way arrest warrants work. It would have to be recalled. You have to show up somewhere for that to happen. Uh, so it, it's not a situation where you're ever going to be able to send money in any form and have an arrest warrant taken care of. Uh, so again, that's a definite, definite warning sign that it's a scam. If somebody's asking you to send money for an arrest warrant, that is a scam 100% of the time. That's not the way arrest warrants work. Um, again, you can't send money to satisfy an arrest warrant. I just said that. Uh, no government agencies, I believe somebody else said this, no government agencies satisfy debts using prepaid uh, cards or gift cards. It just doesn't happen. Uh, it's going to be cash, money order. Most government agencies, especially for fines, do not even take checks. Uh, some don't even, uh, won't even do anything but a debit card. Uh, because they're afraid that, that even credit cards might be uh, canceled uh, or fraudulent. So uh, usually it's cash or money order, and you have to be present to satisfy that debt. So uh, again, don't fall into any time you hear gift card, prepaid card, anything like that, uh, do not, do not fall into that. That is a scam. I'm going to say 100% of the time. Uh, 
Uh, I said already, and I'll say it again, never, ever, 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 and one more ever, give out personal information over the phone. It does not matter who you're talking to. It does not matter who they are, uh, even if it's an organization. And I'll say this, even if it's an organization you have worked with before, there's no reason for anybody to be soliciting your personal information over the telephone. Uh, if you have to do business with somebody and they need more information, go to that agency, go to that person, go to wherever you need to go, sit down with that person and let them get the information they need. Uh, never, 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 ever give information out over the phone. It's just a way for you, for somebody to get your information and, and you be a victim of identity theft or some other kind of theft. Uh, I always say, hang up, find the published number for the agency and call them back. Uh, even if it's something legitimate, I'm still going to hang up, call the published number, say, I just got a call from your agency uh, wanting to do this business proposition. Uh, I need you to tell me more about that and see what they say. Uh, because I'm just in the habit of not ever doing business with somebody who calls me. I always want to be the person that's calling that agency. Uh, and that way I can verify, you know, if it's a business or if it's somebody that I'm actually going to do business with, I can verify I'm doing business with the correct people. Uh, and then, of course, I'm going to find out more information. Uh, and again, something somebody else said much earlier. Uh, you know, if somebody's soliciting business, if they're calling you, uh, then that's that should always be a red flag. And again, I always say, hang up, find a published number, call them back so you know you're talking to the actual people. Uh, and a lot of times you're going to find out, no, we don't do business that way. They're going to say, we don't make cold calls for business. So that was not us. If you'd like to know more about your our business, here's how we do business. Uh, so just some things to be thinking of as we're going through the holiday season. I want you all to stay safe. I want you to keep watch yours <laughs> always. So, um, and I, I will say, uh, I work for SLED in our community relations division, um, and part of what we do in community relation is uh, public education. So if there is a, a group that uh, would like public education uh, on any form, uh, everything from senior safety at home and out to uh, any topic that you may uh, be interested in that's something that we do in law enforcement, uh, there's my number and my email are certainly uh, on the slide here that you can see. And I would love to hear from anybody who would like to uh, have us come talk to their group or organization about anything that's going on. And I'll turn it back for possible questions if we have any. Yes, yeah, sir. Thanks, Eric. What a great, uh, really terrific presentation. We do have one question here I'll let you address real quickly. I'm wondering if you have um, stats that show any impact of doorbell cameras. Are they assisting uh, law enforcement in catching crooks? I don't have hard stats on it. Um, they have been very effective in identifying, and not just doorbell cameras. I will, I will say from the law enforcement side, um, we have had tremendous success with uh, deer cameras, if you're familiar with the cameras that people use for hunting, um, being placed up around properties, tremendous success with those. Uh, any sort of camera system, tremendous success uh, in clearing cases. And of course, doorbell cameras have just exploded that, that industry. Uh, but I don't have statistics, but anytime we can get a picture of the, the person who's done the crime, uh, we have access to all the DMV photo records. Uh, we have access at SLED, we have access to uh, that the fancy software that, that will actually match pictures with, uh, with the act facial recognition. Uh, so uh, we have access to that as well. So anytime we can get a picture of somebody that's committed a crime, 
Uh, we have a very good chance of, of solving that crime. So That's great. So that is yeah. definitely a, a good tool. And uh, I'm sure statistics as time goes on will, will show um, that that is a helpful thing. Well, listen, uh, being from SLED, you definitely um, have a unique perspective and um, base of knowledge for um, the two subjects that you addressed for us today. And we really do um, appreciate that and appreciate what y'all um do at SLED, the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division.